Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the second module of theory of computation and in this module we will be learning about the regular expressions so make sure you watch this video till the end and if you watch this video till the end easily you can score more than 80% marks in TOC and uh, yeah, hit the like button subscribe to my channel that helps me make more videos like this without wasting any more time let's get started so these are the topics which we will be discussing let's have a look at each one by one the first one is the regular expression okay so what do you mean by regular expression so a uh, regular expression is a language represented in the form of symbols okay it is a language which is represented in the form of symbols okay so there are some rules in regular expression let's have a look at the rules then we will see uh, some examples okay so as you can see this is a null string okay this is called as a null string and this is epsilon epsilon is an empty string so you might say that null string and empty string is same thing but no string null means no string okay there is no string present at all there is nothing yeah. there epsilon is still a string which is still empty okay like this okay so this is an empty string it does not have any value in it okay that is called as an uh, empty string and it's denoted by the epsilon symbol so if you multiply the null symbol with the epsilon symbol it is equivalent to multiplying 0 with 1 okay if you multiply 0 with 1 you will be getting the value 0 itself so uh, null into the epsilon will be getting the null value only and if we add uh, epsilon with the null value we will be getting epsilon here it is 1 plus 0 like that okay so 1 plus 1 is 1 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 0 is equal to 1 0 plus 0 1 if you take 0 as common you will be getting 0 multiplied by empty string plus 1 so 0 multiplied by empty string you will be getting 0 and 0 multiplied by 1 you will be getting 0 1 okay and 0 multiplied by epsilon or 0 multiplied by null both are equal to 0 okay if a and b are regular expression then a b is concatenation okay alpha beta is concatenation alpha union beta is union alpha star means alpha is repeated zero or more times this is the main difference if you use star here alpha is repeated zero or more times if it is a plus here at least one time it will be repeated one or more time okay and what is the language of null the language of null is null it contains no strings okay observe carefully it contains no strings if the language uh, is the epsilon, the uh, language contains an empty string because epsilon means empty string. You can write the uh, language of alpha beta as language of alpha concatenated with alpha or language of beta. And the language of alpha union beta can be written as language of alpha union language of beta. Okay. Now let's have a look at the questions. Write a regular expression for strings with zeros and ones. So we have the alphabets 0 and 1 which begin with 0 and end with 1. Okay, so the starting should be 0 and the ending should be 1. In between, we can have 0 or 1 and n number of times you can have. So you understood how I've written this one. Starting should be 0 and ending should be 1 and in between you can have 0 plus means or and here we'll be writing 1. Either you can select 0 or you can select 1 and you can repeat n number of times. How many times you want to can select 0 then 1 and alternatively also you can do. So this denotes the regular expression for the strings with 0 and 1 starting with 0 and ending with 1 strings with zeros and ones ending with double zero so initially i can have zero or one i repeated n number of times but it should be ending with double zero okay strings begin with zero or one so it can begin with zero and one and after that i can have zero or one n number of times okay all strings begin with zero or one and not having two consecutive zeros okay we should not have two zeros together for that what all the combinations i can have it should not have two consecutive zeros means either only zero can be accepted okay and if only zero i have taken i will take zero from here and from here i'll not take anything because star is there i can include zero number of times also so zero will be included i can include only one also and if i try to include zero and another zero one will also come here okay so this will not be possible and one will be coming from here obviously so it will never be zero and zero one it will be zero and one plus zero one okay so it will be 0 and 1 0 1 like that it will be okay it will never be 0 0 1 or something like that okay so this is the regular expression for uh, 0 or 1 uh, with the starting and not two consecutive zeros moving on we have uh, another type of question where we have defined the language as w which belongs to a and b star where w's length is even so w's length is even means 2 should be there and it should be repeating a number of times it can be 0 or more time then only we'll be getting a uh, even string right so in the first place there can be uh, a or b and in the second place also there can be an a and b either uh, one which you have to select for sure and then the whole thing we can repeat n number of times okay then in a power n b power m it is star and star no matter how many times you want you can repeat it it can be either zero also okay if it was given as 
n greater than or equal to 1 m greater than or equal to 1 in that case at least 1 should be there right so here i'll take as plus instead of uh, multiplied sign okay and this is the uh, another question here so here a power n is given so i'll take star here and b power 2 m is given so m value whatever i take it will be multiplied with 2 so uh, if 1 uh, m is there it will become 2 times so whatever the value i take here it should be twice right and it is plus 2 if i subtract uh, separate this it will be 2 power m multiplied by b2 right it will be like this this is the uh, algebra simple algebra uh, formula so uh, b square is there right b square means bb okay b square means bb so bb it will be ending okay so this is the uh, way you write the regular expressions let's move on to the second topic which is the finite automata now the main question here is convert fsm into regular expression using the state elimination method very very important question from exam point of view okay so uh, we will be given with an fsm finite state machine and we will be have to convert into regular expression fsm is equal to dfsm or NF, uh, ndfsm which is uh, deterministic finite automata or non deterministic finite automata so uh, just follow the steps you can solve any question very easily okay so this is the question which is given to us first step is to eliminate all the dead states this is a dead state right because from here you cannot go back okay wherever you cannot go back that's called as a dead state so in the dead state you have to eliminate once you eliminate the dead state your figure will look something like this okay so here we don't have the dead state after this thing you have to create a new start state because start state cannot be the final state here as you can see in the start state there is a double circle that means start state itself is the accepting state and the final state so it cannot be that case so in that case what you have to do take a separate uh, starting state here and through epsilon transition uh, mark it to here okay so this box which i have made here this box is equivalent to this one okay and a new start state i have taken so this is the starting state now just that i have done okay after this step what you have to do you have to eliminate the uh, states and one by one we will eliminate so first we will eliminate q2 so uh, sorry first we will eliminate q1 so once we eliminate q1 observe what's happening from here what i do i go through zero and come with one i go through zero come with one so going like this i am uh, taking zero and one right coming back here from here i took one zero and one so instead of this whole thing what i can write is just zero and one like this right same thing i can do for this also it is going from one and coming to zero so here also i can write as one zero sorry this is one zero okay not zero one it is one zero okay and uh, if i form a regular expression it will be zero one from here and one zero from here okay either this or this and it can be repeated n number of times okay so this is how you form the regular expression and this is the final state here okay this is how you convert fsm into uh, regular expression let's see another example here this diagram is given the first state is to check if there is any dead state or not is there any dead state no from every state there is an ongoing node okay if there is an ongoing node outgoing node that is not called as a dead state in dead state there will be no outgoing nodes okay so as you can see here in this dead state there was no outgoing nodes no node is coming out of this one even if it is coming it is a self loop that does not consider okay so here no such state is there where outgoing is not there okay so all the states are normal states next step is to eliminate uh, each step one by one okay so first let's take this one and eliminate it is going through b and coming through b okay so this whole path can be written as bb okay that's what i have done here next is i can eliminate uh, b here that b and uh, a here okay so first let's eliminate a so this is either go through bb or go through a right so it can be written as a or bb like that okay so here i am reaching and here it is uh, b star so uh, if i eliminate that and write b star and after that it is a so it will be a so the regular expression is this thing a plus bb b star a okay let's have a look at another question so here the first thing you need to check is the dead state is there any dead state no there is no dead state second thing is the starting state the final state yes then a uh, separated so i have separated the uh, starting state here and uh, now uh, we have made these questions now there cannot be two final state there should be only one final state okay so here as you can see this is also final state this is also final state to eliminate that i will take this transition here and make a new final state here okay epsilon transition i can take and make a new final state here that's what i have to do i have taken the epsilon transitions from this and this now this became non-final state and this became the final state after you have done that start removing the states let's consider three okay so observe carefully here i am going through b here and i am coming through a after that if i want to remove three here a is repeated n number of times so it will become a star and i am coming through a a star then going through b so it will be a a star b this is what i'll be getting here a a star b 
and here another B is present here. So it, after that you have to eliminate uh, two. Okay. So after that, uh, see how I'm considering what to eliminate. This is the starting set is connected with here. So that will consider at last, which is farthest from it that will be considering. So here two is there and four is the final set. We cannot eliminate this one. You have to eliminate the intermediary states. So I've selected two. Now from two, how many outgoing is there? One outgoing is this one. This is pretty simple. Another outgoing is this one. Okay. So here I am giving an epsilon transition, but when I consider from one, I have to consider coming back to one. What all can happen? Either this can happen or from A, I can go here to this final state. Okay, so this I'll consider. Two things can happen. Either this can happen or from A, I can go to this state. So those two things I'll be writing here. First is this one. Okay, from here, I'll go to A. Okay, A and that A will be considered here also. Okay, and this thing also can be considered with A because I can take A and go with like this, right? So this will be A here and this whole thing will be written here. Okay, this whole thing will be written here along with A. That can happen or A can be continued till here. Okay, so uh, this place can be substituted with A. So this is substituted with A. You can understand it from here. From 1 to 2, I'm going through A and from 2 to 4, I'm going through Epsilon. So it actually means from 1 to 4, I'm going through only A, right? So that's what I've written here. 1 to 4, only through A. Okay, and this A came from this one. First, this A is coming and from this uh, this is coming so a is getting concatenated with this one okay first a then this like that okay first a then this and this is a self loop here after that uh, this is going here and now what i have to do i have to eliminate uh, one if i eliminate one what will be happening now i can go uh, I, I i'm taking epsilon here and this whole thing is happening n number of times right this whole thing can happen n number of times so that one i'll consider here this is happening n number of times after that in this place, I have two options, either go through Epsilon or go through A. So, Epsilon or A I can take like that. Okay. Along with this n number of times, I can take Epsilon or A. This n number of times along with Epsilon or A. And it will reach the final state. So, this is my regular expression. Okay. Next one. Till now, we considered FSM to RE. Right. Now, we will consider the reverse of it, which is RE to FSM. Okay. RE to FSM. So every regular expression can be represented as FSM. Okay. So there are few rules which you need to remember. If alpha is C, which is belonging to the alphabet set, then the diagram will be as follows. If alpha is C means only C is present here. Start state. This is the final state. Regular expression will be C. If alpha is null, then there will be no final state. Only starting state will be there. Our regular expression will also be null. If it is an epsilon, the starting state only will be the final state. And the regular expression is the epsilon. If you want to perform the union, okay, union of language alpha is written as language beta union language gamma, okay, the union of these two leads to alpha, okay, like that we have considered. So, uh, let's separate it. This will be A and this will be B, okay. Now, let's make A and B here. Now, if I form, uh, want to form the union, union means I have to create a new starting state, okay, and connect it via epsilon to S1 and S2, okay. So, a new state I have created. After that, I'll take uh, two epsilon here. And in first epsilon, I'll substitute this one. In second epsilon, I'll substitute this one. Okay, this is how you take the union. Next is concatenation. If L uh, beta and concatenation L gamma is present, so A into B. A is this one, B is this one. And just put A here, epsilon transition, and then B here. This is called as concatenation. The last one is the repetition. In repetition, you will be having a thing like this, A, and it will be going to the final state. If you want to do the repetition, the first step is Take another accepting state or the final state here and keep it. Do the epsilon transition. After that, make this thing M1. Okay, this thing you make here. Okay. After you made this thing here, just put an epsilon transition here. Got my point. First, make a final state or the accepting state as well as the starting state. And then take, uh, take epsilon transition to this one. Make this one what is uh, the equivalent of this one. And after that, uh, put an epsilon here. This is the uh, diagram from re uh, for repetition. If you want to make a a a using this diagram, what will happen? A again epsilon will come here. Another a epsilon will come here. Another a. So a a a is accepted via this diagram. Okay. So this is how you make the diagram for uh, con uh, repetition. So union, concatenation, and repetition. Okay. These three things you need to know to convert our regular expression to FSM. Let's consider some examples. So the example given here is B union AB star. And now if such a type of question is given, what you have to do is you have to divide it into smaller parts. Okay, this whole thing can be divided into this part, 
gamma uh, i mean the union this part okay this is one part union this part now let's focus on this part okay this part is what concatenation a concatenation b so let's make a and b here and do the concatenation first so fsm for ab will be a concatenation b so ab is this one okay next i have to do the union of b with this diagram so uh, b is like this okay and uh, ab is like this i have to do the union between these two what i told you about the union if you want to uh, two things uh, if you want the union this is first thing second thing if you want to do the union take a new starting state epsilon transition the first state here second state here the union is done in the following way okay so the same thing here also i have to do here our first state is b okay i have to do a union between b and ab right so b is the first state and ab is the second state if i want to do the uh, union of these two i have to take a new starting state and i have to do the epsilon transition to b as well as ab okay after this i have to do the star right see after i have done uh, separately b union uh, ab this is done after that one thing is remaining is star so this diagram i have i have to do the diagram star so what i told you how to do the star in repetition if i have one diagram that star i have to do i have to take the new final state epsilon transition to this one and from the final state to the starting state i have to do the epsilons okay so let's have a look and how, uh, how this happens here okay so this state first i will make okay this state is nothing but this one this one this one this one this one and this one okay this is the starting state now i have taken a new final state and put an epsilon here okay that is the first step second step is connect all these ones uh, final state to the starting state via epsilon okay connect this final state to the starting state via epsilon that's all you are ready with the equation for uh, the diagram for the regular expression okay b union ab star moving on to the second question here also similar question ab is present here a union b is there first take a union b okay or uh, the ab direct ab it's present here so ab will be like this next is a union b so how will a union b look like this is starting state and here is a and b so this whole diagram is a union b next there is a concatenation between a this and this but before that a union b is repeated n number of times so a union b repeated n number of times will look like this now you have to do the a b uh, concatenation with a union b star okay so for that a b a union b star concatenate to concatenate just write a b here which we had got earlier a union b also you write here bit in between them just make an epsilon transition that is how you do the concatenation okay so uh, this is about how to convert the regular expressions to the finite state machines okay very important question let's move on to the third topic proving languages not to be regular this is also very very important from exam point of view how do we prove a language which it is not regular we have to prove it okay to prove a language it is not regular at least one of these three conditions should not pass okay there are three conditions and if, even if one of them did not pass it means that language is not regular so our aim is to make any of these conditions fail okay so what is the condition if w is equal to x y z okay w is a string which can be represented in the form of x y and z for each i greater than or equal to 0 x y power i z belongs to l means no matter how much value we have of i we have and increase the y here based on the value of i that should still belong to l okay that is first condition second is the value of y should be greater than zero third is x and y should be less than or equal to n x multiplied by y the length of x and multiplied by the length of y should be less than or equal to n what is n n is the whole length of uh, this one the whole length of uh, the string okay so let's have a look see show uh, a power n and b power n is not regular okay so let's take l is equal to a power n b power n and uh, which belongs to like this a power n b power n n is greater than or equal to zero now if n value i took as two okay what will happen if n value i took as two here i'll be taking the n value two and x y and z okay now y power one okay this is why we have to pump y what is meaning of pumping y power one is b only y power two is bb y power three is three b's like that okay this is called as pumping okay now if i pump the value of b what will happen if i uh, take it two uh, the value of b will be bb okay so what will happen a a b b b does a a b b b belong to l l condition is a power n b power n the number of a's and b should be equal but after pumping it is not equal so since after pumping this is not equal to l 
therefore it is not a regular language the first condition was it should belong to l no matter how much time i pump the value of y it should still belong to l then only it is regular if it is not belonging to l that means we have proven it is not regular okay all right uh, let's discuss another question here so show that even palindrome is not regular okay we have to show that even palindrome is not regular now let's see here i have taken a palindrome a b c c b a this is called as a palindrome and it's even palindrome right now see pump y okay this x y and z i can take however i want i can take this x this y and this z i just have to divide the string into three parts and take x y and z like that any anywhere you can divide it's your wish now i have divided x as a b as y and this whole thing as z okay so i'll pump y if i take y cube it will be b b b okay y power 3 will be b b b so x is not a palindrome see this is not a palindrome a b b b c c b a i have divided into two parts is both the parts same left and right no it's not same so it's not a palindrome when it's not a palindrome it's an even but it's not a palindrome right since it's not a palindrome it does not belong to l so it is not regular okay so this is how you prove the language is not regular at least one of the three rules should uh, not pass okay Moving on to the first topic, which is closure properties of regular languages. What do you mean by closure property? If certain languages are regular, okay, there are some languages which are regular, L1, L2, L3. These languages are regular, okay. Then L formed by certain operations on those languages is also regular. So there are certain operations which I perform. If, if I perform on these and I get another language L, this will also be regular. So what are those operations? Let's have a look at those operations one by one. Okay, so here the union of two regular languages is regular if you take the l1 and l2 if i take the union if both l1 and l2 are regular even l uh, whatever the language is formed that will also be regular the intersection of two languages is regular complement is also regular difference is regular reversal closure concatenation and homomorphism which means substitution of the uh, strings for the symbol is also regular inverse homomorphism is also regular so these are the nine closure properties uh, which uh, are there in the regular expressions okay moving on to the next one which is equivalence and minimization of automata very very important question from exam point of view okay so let's have a look what this question uh, is about so there are two topics here equivalence and minimization and minimization is more important one okay so let's discuss quickly what is equivalence how do we test if two automata are equivalent okay here we'll be testing the equivalence of automata so two states are said to be equal if both are accepting uh, state or both are non accepting state accepting means what final states if both the states are final states it is called as equivalent and if it is not it will also be called as not equivalent means both should be non accepting or both should be accepting like that okay if one is accepting one is non accepting it is not equal okay so here let's take an example as you can see one dfa is this one and second dfa is this one now based on this dfa just write the classes here means the uh, uh, letters here b c d e you write here and a b c d you write here okay after you have written this one you have to put x wherever uh, two things like for example this is b and this is a now observe this diagram in this diagram b is non accepting state and a is accepting state if that happens put an x if either of them is accepting and otherwise is non non accepting then you have to put x based on that you have to put all the values of x here okay if you put this axis here the remaining ones are the ones which both are accepting or both are non accepting take out that pair which are uh, both uh, accepting or non accepting means these pairs are the ones in which x was not there okay so here c and uh, c and a c and a does not have any x present so c and a will be a pair like that okay like that four pairs will be uh, taken from this table here okay because four pairs are uh, seen so these four pairs are called equivalent uh, pairs because uh, both are non accepting or both are accepting okay so these four pairs we have got now we have to consider the starting states since a and c which are the starting states here here the starting state is c here the starting state is a if both a and c are coming in a single pair and both are uh, starting states then it is called, known as two dfs are equivalent so two dfa the whole diagram will become equivalent if the starting states have come in a single pair and both are uh, yeah both are starting states and both have come in a single pair okay and they are equivalent then it is called as the whole uh, the two dfs will be equivalent okay this dfa is equal to this dfs uh, dfa that was about the equivalence let's have a look about the minimization in minimization of the dfa uh, you have to follow some steps okay the first
first step what you have to do is observe this diagram and note down which are final and which are non-final states so tell me which are uh, non-final states is one final or non-final it is non-final three is non-final state five is non-final state then six is non-final state so make up a group like this and which are the final states two and four so make another group like this then observe which are the letters used the letters used are a and b right in whole diagram the letters used are a and b so after your first step you have to consider each of these cases. this is the first case this is the second case now consider each case one by one let's consider the first case now you're considering the first case and you have two letters so this case of consider for a and this case of consider for b okay that is the step one for A, you will consider 2 and 4, and for B, you will be considering 2 and 4. Okay. Now, see 2 uh, on A, you have to do 2 on A, and you have to do 4 on A. Here, you will do 2 on B, and here, you will do 4 on B. So, what do you mean by 2 on A? If you observe this diagram, 2 on A, which state you are going? I am going to 3, and which group 3 belongs? 3 belongs to this group, or 3 belongs to this group? This group 3 belongs to. So, this group I will be writing with the answer here. Okay. Same thing I'll do for this also 4 with A. 4 with A where it is going? It is going 6. 6 belongs to which group? 6 belongs to this group. So I'll be writing 1, 3, 5, 6 here. Okay. Like that I'll do for B also. I'll be writing here uh, where B is going with that class I'll write. And I'll observe if these both are same or not. If it is same, I'll write no split. These both are same or not. It is same. I'll write no split. So we have considered 2 and 4 for both A and B. Now we have to consider 1, 3, 5, 6 for A and B. So 1 with A, 3 with A, 5 with A and 6 with A and then 1 with B, 3 with B, 5, B, 5 with B and 6 with B. Like that I'll write, okay. Second one I'll write 1, 3, 5, 6 and 1, 3, 5, 6 with A and B. Now again the same thing I'll do 1 with A. If you observe carefully, 1 with A where it is going? It is going to 2. So 2 belongs to which group? This group or this group? It is going to this group. So I'll be writing 2, 4 here, okay. So like that I'll do for all of them. After I've done that, I observe that when I go from 6 to A, I'm reaching this group. And from 6 to B, I'm reaching this group. So here there is a split happening because all are not same. So what do I mean when I say split is happening? Split is happening means there is a difference, okay. Whenever there is a difference, I have to separate it. So the difference is happening here. I'll separate this one, okay. And what I have separated, I have separated 6 here. So 1, 3, 5 will be one group and 6 will be another group. That it means, okay. 1, 3, 5 will be one group, 6 will be another group, okay. Like that. Now again, the same thing we have to do. 2, 4, again I'll consider 2, 4 on A, 2, 4 on B. And if I see another split here, yes, I see another split here. 1, 3, 5 and 6 here, another split. What do you mean by a split? Split means take it separately. Take it separately means which is getting uh, separated here? 4. So 2 and 4, that get separated. From the group 2 and 4, it was together here. Now it will get separated 2 and 4. Okay, here also 2 and 4 got separated. So now we have 2, 4, 1, 3, 5 and 6. Now we have to only consider those classes which are multiple here for the splits. Now see for each class we are taking the splits. The split will only be considered if there are more than one uh, numbers inside one class. Okay, so 1, 3, 5 will be checking. 1, 3, 5 on A, 1, 3, 5 on B. So I'm getting one single uh, digits here. So uh, it will not have any more splits. Here everything is same and here everything is same. So there will be no splits individually. So the final classes will be these. We'll be writing here the final classes. Here we need not check the single classes for the split. Only the multiple classes we check for the split. Now make the final diagram. In the final diagram, how many classes I have? 2, 4, 1, 3, 5 and 6. Just make here 2, 4, 1, 3, 5 and 6. After that, which were the final classes? Okay. So here if you observe the first diagram, which were the final classes? The final classes in the initial diagram was 2 and 4. So in my final class also, wherever I have 2 or 4, that will become the fin uh, final classes. Okay. So here, uh, what will become final class? This will become final class and this will become final class. Now the question comes, how do we make these arrow diagrams? Observe carefully. 1, 3 and 5. I have considered here 1, 3 and 5, right? 1, 3 and 5 on A, where it is going? It is going to 2. So here I have written 1, 3, 5 on A, it is going to 2. And 1, uh, 2 on A, where it is going? See, observe carefully. 2 on A, where I had done. 2 on A, it is going to 1, 3, 5, right? So I will be coming here and writing that same thing. 2 on A is going to 1, 3, 5. Like that, I will do for all the other classes. Whichever class you want, whichever the alphabet you want, do that and uh, make this diagram. Okay. This is how you do the minimization of the DFSM. Very, very important question from exam point of view.
Moving on to the last topic, which is the applications of RE, which is the uh, regular expressions application. So here we have three applications. Okay, the first one is regular expression is used in Unix. Okay, so in Unix, how it is used? Let's have a look. So in Unix, um, okay. So the symbol dot is used in Unix for denoting any character, and this sequence denotes a or b, uh, a to till a k. Okay, and uh, we can even use the plus or minus signs, and we can use this sign for not equal to, and uh, we can include all the set of characters from capital A to capital Z, a b c, and small a b c till z, and then zero one two three. All those things can be represented using this one. Okay, this is called as the a regular expression here a to z and small a to z and 0 to 9 within this small uh, specification we can uh, represent all the set of characters okay and if you want to represent the digits we just have to write this one alpha only this one alpha numeric we can write as this one which includes all the alphabets capital and small as well as all the digits right so these are the ways in which we can easily represent in the unix okay also the operator this is used in the place of plus and question mark means 0 or 1 and we can use the uh, plus means one or more of like r plus and if you want to denote r r r r like that if you want to denote we can use r5 okay so uh, five times r will be denoted uh, so this is some ways in which you can use the regular expression to easily represent uh, the uh, whatever the values you want to represent in the unix okay next is the lexical analysis what do you mean by lexical analysis lexical analysis means uh, the in the compiler right when we write the code and we compile the code at that time there will be lexical analyzer what it does it scans all the tokens and uh, that are the groups of ones in which, which uh, they are together and meaningful so it will scan all the tokens which we insert and whichever are together and meaningful it will consider it together okay so we can use regular expressions to define which uh, group it should form based on the similarities so uh, re helps in the grouping of the tokens in lexical analyzer the last one is the finding pattern syntax if you want to specify uh, like for example if you want to find all the words that start with a capital letter we can use the following regular expression we can uh, denote a to z all the capital letters then anything can come or nothing can also come okay so based on this small regular expression we can all uh, we can find the uh, all the words which are starting with a capital letter okay so these are the three applications uh, very important question from the exam point of view make sure you learn all these topics very well and if you found this video helpful please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one